Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our second video of our disease series. In this case, and in this video, we're going to talk about a very dangerous pathogen called powdery mildew, a disease that came from America and destroyed and collapsed the entire European wine industry in the 19th century. Um, well, this disease is known as the oidium of the grapevine, caused by Uncinula necator, is also a fungus. Uh, and well, despite being a fungus, it's very different from different fungi like downy mildew, black rot, and bathritis. In this case, it's also an obligate, an obligate parasite like downy mildew because it needs a host to survive and to feed on, as we already know. However, the the impacts on yield are the biggest, like and the strongest compared to any losses caused by other pathogens. And as we're going to see that later in this presentation. And in this case, it's also very dangerous because in this case, vineyard history is crucial. Meaning is if your vineyard already had powdery mildew, well, there's, there's a high probability that that pathogen might still be in your vines. So it's not really, it's not really like just dormant on soil ready to infect them, but your, your grapevine tissue might already be a source of inoculum. And well, that's basically a disaster waiting to happen. Um, to begin talking about the life cycle of powdery mildew, imagining we don't have a pre-existing infection, powdery mildew is going to, uh, it's going to overwinter in its fruiting bodies called Cleistothecia, as you can see in this image. Uh, and it's not actually going to be on soil. It can be on soil as well, but imagine also there's no pre-existing infection. It's going to be in the wood in bark crevices. And well, Cleistothecia in, inside, as you can see, they have these spores called ascospores. And the thing with powdery mildew, and one of the reasons it's so dangerous, it's because it doesn't, it, unlike downy mildew, it doesn't need any free water. It doesn't need any specific relative humidity, like high levels of relative humidity in order to develop. It only needs a certain temperature for that to occur. And that's really danger, dangerous because, well, if you have dry conditions, which obviously it's happening a lot with climate change, uh, certain terroirs are becoming drier and drier. And this obviously opens the door for powdery mildew to develop. So as long as you have the certain temperature conditions between four and eight hours, you're gonna have a full discharge of ascospores from the Cleistothecium and they only need wind to reach and be transmitted to the green tissue of your grapevines. And obviously when that happens, we're going to see symptoms after the latency period. In this case, we can see in this leaf, you have white powdery patches on the top side. Um, well, and what exactly are these patches and how is powdery mildew then transmitted to other grapevines? Uh, in this case, the white patches are going to be Canidiophores. Canidiophores also a spare a spore, a spore bearing organ, which is called conidia. And um, well, after around seven days, they're going to develop in the surface of your grapevine tissue, and they're going to discharge these canidia. They are going to in fact other healthy grapevines, including leaves, shoots, buds included, which is very dangerous, and also eventually your, I mean, our grapes, which is very bad for, for yield. Uh, so the disease can spread rapidly just by having that specific temperature. Um, so 
this poses a lot of challenges, obviously, for, for growers and for the, obviously, for the vineyard, which is like a vicious circle is created. And that's why the vineyard history in regards to Ovidium is very important because you're going to have the formation of conidia, right? The spores, and they're going to infect healthy vines. But as I said, they're not going to infect just leaves or shoots or canes, but they're also going to infect buds. And this is a problem because buds are then going to develop whether in the same growing season as lateral shoots, for example, fruiting canes or in the next growing season. So we might have an infected bud, but we don't know about it. So that means that powdery mildew can be in our vineyard without us noticing. So what happens is when you come to the next growing season, the bud bursts and the shoot develops and that shoot is infected. And once the temperature conditions are optimal, they will develop canidia right away or after a few days. And that is going to continue the outbreak. So that's why that's what exa what exactly makes powdery mildew so, so dangerous. And obviously, not only can powdery mildew overwinter as Clystothesia, I'm sorry, uh, as I said in the beginning, in case there was obviously no pre existing infection, but it also can overwinter in infected buds. So, this is something to take into account, and this is something that has to be avoided at all costs. So, obviously, uh, preventive uh, measures and practices need to be applied in order to remove all infected wood. And this is something that we have to detect and obviously prevent at all costs. So for disease development, as I said, powdery mildew is dangerous because it only depends on temperature basically. And as far as you have a humidity above 40%, you will have a germination. So the requirements are not a lot. So if you, if you, if we have vineyards in places with dry conditions, dry weather, sunny, sunny, obviously sunny conditions, like this is going to be a problem and we have to pay a lot of attention. So as, as long as we have a temperature between 21 to 32 degrees Celsius, obviously the optimal being between 20 and 25, this, well, there is a slight chance that this disease is development and ready to, to hit the road, obviously, as we would say. Uh, so the role of TerraView in all this is obviously try to find solutions to make sure that doesn't happen. And since, well, powdery mildew is very, very, very dangerous when it comes to causing yield loss. So we have three issues here, starting with optimizing fungicide application, just like downy mildew. And again, we cannot emphasize or stress enough the importance of implementing models to see how the disease is developing and where identifying like whatever, like uh, the life cycle or, or and where we stand. Um, to be able to obviously save resources and be very, very, very effective. And uh, the thing with powdery mildew here, even though it likes dry conditions, there has to be some something that helps its development, which is obviously the microclimate and the canopy. So if you have a very dense canopy, that actually benefits powdery mildew because powdery mildew likes diffuse light, like some shading, so if you have a very dense canopy, this is going to be definitely something that will help its development. So it, we have to guarantee that we have a healthy canopy, especially one that is ventilated, one that, well, that can experience like direct sunlight. So the healthy, the healthier the canopy, the less, I mean, the, the less the chance of having a powdery mildew outbreak. And finally, obviously we need to track weather data, including rainfall, because actually rainfall is detrimental for powdery mildew development. And also with rain and free moisture, it actually develops an hyperparasite that is going to that is going to obviously fight powdery mildew and try to contain it. So by by tracking all of these factors and implementing models and monitoring also canopy density leaf area we make sure that 
an outbreak doesn't really happen. So, uh, well, that obviously concludes my presentation for powdery mildew. If you have feedback, again, don't hesitate sending me an email. And uh, well, thank you for being here and see you in the next video.